She's seen better days, I suppose. Believe me, I'd have her shining again, if only I had the time. Hello, and welcome to Visions of the Past, an Assassin's Creed lore podcast. My name is Andrew, and I'm glad to see that you have found this podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the city where the villa that Mario Auditore was talking about is located, and that is the city of Monteregioni. Monteregioni is a commune in the province of Siena within Tuscany. It was originally built by the Sienese between 1214 and 1219 as a front for their wars with Florence. During these conflicts between Siena and Florence, Monteregioni was strategically placed as a defensive fortification and would withstand many attacks from the Florentines and the Bishop of Volterra. In 1554, the Sienese placed the control of the town's garrison to Giovanni Zitti, who was exiled from Florence, but later in that year, he would reconcile with the Medici family and hand the town over to them. Monteregioni also has a place within Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. This work used the city's walls to evoke the sight of the Ring of Giants encircling the Infernal Abyss. Now that we have a brief historical look on the town, let's take a look at its position within Assassin's Creed. The city itself can be seen within Assassin's Creed II and its novel Assassin's Creed Renaissance, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and its novel of the same name, Assassin's Creed Project Legacy and Assassin's Creed Initiates. In 1290, the Villa Auditore was constructed, but the identity of the one who built it is unknown, but it would be damaged 30 years after in one of the many Florentine attacks. After the death of Dante Alighieri in 1321, Domenico Auditore bought and renovated the villa using funds that he received from Marco Polo. Domenico and his son Renato would use the city as a base of operations for their hidden war against the region's Templars. When Domenico restored the villa, he would change the exterior and add a painting gallery. He would also hide the Almer of Altair ibn Ahad in the sanctuary beneath the villa, using seals to lock the armor away that would be hidden throughout Italy. In 1296, a crypt would be built within Monteregioni that would become the Auditore family crypt. This would later have Domenico's memoirs inscribed on the crypt's walls. Sometime in the mid-14th century, the Italian assassins would steal a Shroud of Eden from the French Templar Geoffrey de Charnay and replace it with a clever forgery. After confirming the Shroud's validity, Renato decided that it needed to be hidden, and after forging church records and claiming fraud on the Shroud, he would drain the well in Monteregioni and excavate further within it to house the Shroud. In 1454, Mario Auditore would be made the sole ruler of Monteregioni when his brother Giovanni moved to Florence. It was also around this time that Monteregioni would come under more frequent attacks by Florence, leading Mario to strengthen the town's economy and its defenses. Shortly after strengthening the town, Mario would discover that Luciano Pizzati was turning families within Monteregioni against each other. After he captured and interrogated, Luciano revealed that Florence was planning a large attack. Mario would rally his forces and successfully repel the attack that was led by Federico Don Montefeltro. After the defense, Mario would continue to interrogate Luciano to discover the purpose of the attack. He would discover that it was meant to acquire an ancient artifact hidden beneath the town. This would lead Mario to work with a team of architects and historians that led to vague references to the city's well. Mario would take a team down and found the Shroud of Eden within its depths. This finding would cost the lives of all of Mario's men and Mario's left eye. After the finding, Mario would have the Shroud removed from Monteregioni by his brother Giovanni. And over the next 20 years, Monteregioni would fall into despair as Mario would start to devote more of his time to the wars in Tuscany and working with the Assassin Brotherhood. By 1476, most of the shops in Monteregioni had closed, and the number of tourists had declined, and the Villa Auditori showed significant signs of neglect. On New Year's Eve 1476, Ezio Auditori da Firenze would take shelter in Monteregioni after the murder of his father Giovanni and his brothers Federico and Petruccio. Over the next 23 years, Ezio would come to be the town's biggest investor and co-ruler with his uncle Mario. As Ezio invested in Monteregioni, the town would prosper, causing the town's shops, barracks, 
the Thieves Guild and the brothel Felina to reopen, along with improvements to the town's well, mine, and church. As these improvements happened to the town, the villa itself would be renovated, and by December 1499 would return as a vital headquarters of the Italian assassins, including flying their flag over the town. By this time, Mario would also add cannons to the town's defenses. On January 2nd, 1500, Cesare Borgia would lay siege to Monteregioni in an attempt to recover the Apple of Eden that Ezio had taken from the Templars in 1498. The defenses of the town would hold long enough that some of the citizens would be able to evacuate, but it would eventually fall, resulting in the death of Mario and the town suffering significant damage. After this siege, the assassins would largely abandon the town and relocate to Rome, though one assassin, Lo Spavario, would stay in Monteregione to protect not only the citizens, but the secret vaults that the town held. Sometime after recovering the apple from the Borgia, hiding it away in the Colosseum vault, Ezio would return to Monteregione and leave a clue for the password for entrance to the vault at the entrance to the sanctuary. Sometime prior to 1554, the Auditore family would regain control of Monteregione, though they would be betrayed that year by Giovanni Zitti, who was at the time the keeper of the garrison and a Florentine in exile. He would give the city over to Florence in exchange for his return to the city. The Auditores, though, would be allowed to keep rule of Monteregione under Florentine leadership due to the good relationship with the Medici. By the 21st century, the town would find itself largely unchanged from its Renaissance appearance becoming a tourist attraction. A plaque in front of the ruined Villa Auditore would even commemorate the siege of the town by the Borgia. On September 9, 2012, a small team of assassins that included Lucy Stillman, Sean Hastings, Rebecca Crane, and Desmond Miles would arrive at the town seeking refuge from Esturbago Industries and set up a temporary hideout within the sanctuary beneath the Villa Auditore. They set up here because the cell phone signal was non-existent allowing for them to avoid being noticed if Abstergo used their cell tower tracking technology. The group would stay in the sanctuary over the next month while Desmond used the Animus to relive Ezio's memories to find where he had placed the Apple of Eden. They would go above ground only at night or when they needed supplies. During their time at Monteregione, Desmond would find a few artifacts from his auditory ancestors. After finding the location of the apple and the password of the door of the Colosseum vault, the assassins would leave on October 12th, 2012. Abstergo would even use the Monteregione around this time as a simulated location during their first stage of training recruits in their Animi training program. Looking back at the history of Monteregione is interesting to me. Most notably, I think that if the Auditory family returned to power in the city after its falls at the hands of the Borgia, restoring the family villa would have been a priority. Yet by 2012, it was still quite disheveled. For a proud family like the Auditories, that seems out of place. Another thing that seems really strange to me is that if the Medici was still so close to the Auditores, why were they so concerned about taking over the city in 1554? I also have never heard of a conquering force leaving the conquered in charge as well, no matter how close they were. If they were close, why did they even take over the city? That makes no sense to me. I also want to mention that Los Bavario's existence seems to be considered ambiguous right now, as that is the lead character in Assassin's Creed Identities. With that said, I really do enjoy Monteregione and the villa itself. Uh, the villa in particular is the only building within Assassin's Creed 2 that you can explore completely. From the sanctuary to Ezio's room, and from the weapon room over to where Claudia keeps the books. Though now that I think about it, not every single room is available, but it is the only one with interiors that is open all the time. Each, though, have their own purpose, delivering seals or getting Altair's armor from the sanctuary, dropping off codex pages in Mario's study, picking up money and upgrading the town in the business office with Claudia, dropping off feathers in Maria's room, the armory, seeing weapons and armors that you've bought, the art gallery with all the paintings that you have purchased throughout Italy, and Ezio's room that has all of the portraits of your targets. I did notice something in my last playthrough as well. In Brotherhood, the tunnel that Ezio leads civilians out of and Lucy and Desmond come up through, uh, it wasn't in Assassin's Creed 2. Sure, it was probably installed while Ezio was in Rome, fist-fighting the Pope. Was also a good reason to add the economy with AC2, though, 
it did make it super easy to always have Florins if you were going to take back the city. But I like to think that Ezio only back whenever he needed it. And Claudia kept everything and gave herself a nice dowry for when she got married later in life. Though, that is a story for another podcast. With everything that I have said about the villa, though, I also need to mention that it isn't a real place. It's uh, completely fictional itself, though it does bear a passing resemblance to the Villa di Miano in its overall form, central portico, number of floors, and its tower. The Villa di Miano is located in the town of Fessio, just north of Florence, which notably was actually owned by the Pazzi in the mid-16th century. I do want to thank you for joining me today. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast, and if you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter at visions underscore AC, a link to which will be in the description to this podcast. Till next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.